This episode of the Nerf Herder Council is brought to you by Audible. Visit audibletrial.com forward slash NHC for your 30-day trial and a free audiobook download. Warning. The following podcast contains irreverent humor, exceptionally nerdy opinions, potential cursing, and plenty of love for the prequels. If any of the preceding offends you, please turn off this podcast immediately and may the force be with you. Why, you stuck up, half witted, scruffy looking nerf herder? You can't use that word. Only we can use that word. And what makes you say something so utterly ridiculous? Are you brainless? You're tuned in to the Nerf Herder Council, your source for Star Wars opinion, conversation, and debate. Featuring your hosts, JT, Star Wars. It's freaking Star Wars. Like, what, you going to go to fucking Jedi Library or something? AJ. Yeah, Rebels, Rebels is a lot like our show, where we think we have a good idea, and then it just fails in execution. <laughs> Steve. It's a sign of any good audio podcast's <laughs> visuals, right? <laughs> On this episode of the Nerf Herder Council, it's part two of our fan feedback reaction episode. We go head to head with a massive troll. This is. Nerf Herder Council. Well, here we go with the troll then. <laughs> so this was from our episode titled, Is J.J. Abrams Already Ruining Episode 9? And user Westworld... Uh, this is this is going to be good. So just to preface this a little bit, uh, Steve, I think you have you read this one in full, AJ. No. Okay. Well, basically, what he does is he claims that the movies show all these facts that we should know, but none of them are actually in the movies. So this is going to be good. I, I if you if you look up if you look up this episode and and you look underneath and you see this guy's comment, I went back at him multiple times. So it's quite a... Because if you go by the original cut on Laserdisc and you play it backwards, you could clearly see that George Lucas... Blah, blah, blah. No, that might have that might have been factual. <laughs> Next guy anywhere near that. So first of all, he starts with, shut the f*** up, clowns. So <clears throat> page 42 of the book, Making of Revenge of the Sith, confirms George Lucas was showing, not telling, Palpatine knowingly created Anakin. Okay, uh, let's just stop right there. Uh, no, because it was just recently revealed in that comic book, as we said, that that's the first time it's been shown that Palpatine is Anakin's father or made him. And even then we said it could be a force vision. So it was not in the making of Revenge of the Sith that he said that that's the case. No, it's not. That was one of the master strokes of that entire scene is that there's some heavy, heavy implication going on. Yeah. But no confirmation whatsoever. Yeah. Like, that's brilliant storytelling. Yep. Uh, before you go on, I don't believe the comic book either. <laughs> well, I, I refuse to like believe that thing. That's... There's we, no way. Well, you did have a good point that it could, it, it, when we talked about it, that it could be like a, a force vision or something. So we don't, we don't <laughs> old, know. Old Annie was just tripping balls. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> yeah, <things>. right. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Um, and he doesn't type very well in some of this. So if I screw the, some of this up, I apologize. I'm, I'm cleaning it up. That. So, uh, <laughs> and I'm not much of a uh, grammar Nazi, but I was like, Jesus, dude. Yeah. Spell check, homie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> So episode one and seven has a powerful dark Lord wanting to rule the galaxy and destroy the Jedi and a mysterious slave on a desert planet with extremely high midichlorian count and is believed to be the chosen one. Okay. Um, how does episode seven, first of all, okay. Episode seven has a powerful dark Lord wanting to rule the galaxy. Okay. Uh, destroy the Jedi. Okay. And a mysterious slave on a desert planet. Okay. With extremely high midichlorian count. Okay, 
I guess, and is believed to be the chosen one. Uh, no, she's not. Ray is not believed to be the chosen one. Ray is is it only is, on Reddit pages? Are yeah, people, like honestly, I know I've personally brought that up once that I was like, hey, maybe Anakin was not meant to be the chosen one. We just assume he was. Maybe it was Ray. Who the hell knows? And, you know, until episode yeah. nine comes out. <laughs> like we don't know so yeah uh, basically when i went through and reread this for the show a lot of this is stuff that he thinks he saw or it's his opinion and he's basically claiming it to be correct and and we're dumbasses because we don't agree with his opinion is really what it is this is what it boils down to yeah yeah I, I think he's a big fan of the matrix actually this whole the chosen one deal like you know the, the one apparently it was five or six of them they just keep getting stuck in this loop of wait until the one emerges and then yeah. squash it, crush Zion, and let it build up again. Yeah. So apparently the chosen one's the same same way. Like the chosen one just kind of like hops along from generation to generation. Like, oh, it's not Anakin anymore. It's totally Luke. No, nah, it's not Luke anymore. It's totally Ray. Chosen one. Yeah. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here we go. Snoke's theme music is completely based on the opera music in Revenge of the Sith when Palpatine, Dark Lord, tells Anakin, slave on a desert planet, that a Dark Lord can create life. He did say create life. Manipulating midichlorians, dumbasses. Um, okay. Snoke's theme is completely based on the opera music. Uh, Not completely, but no. uh, it's very similar. It and is similar. And John Williams loves to do callbacks. So I wouldn't doubt that that's deliberate. So, yeah, I like... See, I really don't understand what his point is through all this because it's, you know, oh, so um, it's theme music and Palpatine tells that a dark lord can create life. Yeah, we know that. All you're doing is quoting a plot point from episode three that everybody knows. What does that have to do with your point? Yeah, if you really want musical callbacks relating to Palpatine, um, has anyone noticed that the music at the end of episode one is the Emperor's theme played in a major key? Yes. Steve, did you notice that? Uh, it's that, been was a while that, that was in that documentary, one, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that was in that documentary. It was really good. It was, I'm sure, uh, if I was, watched uh, it uh, today, I would notice it. But <laughs> it's cool stuff, man. Uh, let's see. Snoke is the new Palpatine. Ray is the new Anakin. Finn is the new Padme. How the hell do you get that? Kylo is the new Darth Vader. I doubt Finn looks great in yoga pants, so <laughs> I'm gonna go with no on that. Yeah. How how is Finn the new Padme? Like, what is that? Um, Kylo is the new Darth Vader. I'm not sure what Padme is to begin with. <laughs> female clearly, protagonist to me. Clearly female protagonist that's going to have twins by the time the end of the trilogy is over. Apparently Duh. so. All right. So Kylo's <laughs> the new Darth Vader. Luke is the new Obi-Wan and Yoda. Episode seven pays homage to a new hope. Episode eight plays homage to Empire Strikes Back. Episode nine pays homage to Return of the Jedi. Okay. How how does episode eight pay homage to Empire Strikes Back? And how does episode nine play or pay homage to Return of the Jedi when we haven't even seen the movie yet? That's impressive. This is what I'm talking about. Like maybe he's a make a wish kid that already saw episode nine. Maybe yeah. he has <laughs> the fanboys again. <laughs> Remember, difficult to see the future is, but you can get some force visions. That is true. I just again maybe maybe this dude's got a high metachlorine count. Yeah. How, how does it how does it pay homage to Empire Strikes Back? I mean, you could see because the Yoda's in it because yeah. <laughs> Yoda's in it. It's the second of a trilogy. I mean, God, you call there's your, an you call your, in the water. Yeah, you call yourself a fan. <laughs> yeah, the the planet surface uh, is where there's a big battle with walkers. Has white stuff on it. There's sand, <laughs> salt. <laughs> Salt. Yeah. I'm sure there's a flashback with sand in it. Somewhere. I mean, that's you. I mean, our Jedi hero in training gets, you know, sucked down into a dark hole. Yes. Um, See, that's the phrasing. thing is, is like, is like all kidding aside. Like if you, if you look at episode the seven, Falcon is in it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you, if you look at episode seven, you can say, okay, it, you, it's pretty obvious that it kind of rips off a new hope. We've been through this. We're not going to get in that, but that's, that's a major complaint about the movie, but I don't think I have ever read one time until this, that episode eight is like an homage to people are wearing hats. <laughs> yeah. Right. Speaking of hats, something's telling me this guy's wearing a tinfoil one while he's typing <laughs> this on YouTube. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So, uh, the sequel trilogy is ending the old saga and starting a new saga. 
Uh, yeah, we know that. Alrighty. Um, Palpatine is the only reason Luke did not kill Vader and why his father was saved. Um, see, people say stuff like that, and I instantly try to figure out how that could be true. And I got nothing. Yeah, how, how did... Pal, why is it Palpatine... It's not Palpatine's reasoning that kept him from killing Vader. I mean, he... He felt good in his father. He felt that the you know the pull between the dark and the light that was in him because he wasn't fully dark side. He had that tug. He's like, holy crap, that's my kid. So what the hell does Palpatine have to do with it? I mean, is he trying to say that uh, that he doesn't want to be completely evil like the Emperor? I mean, I, I don't I don't understand where he's going where he's, where he's coming from with that one. Maybe it was seeing the Emperor's ability to twist people and cast them into servitude that like showed Luke how badly his father needed his help to get pulled away from the dark side. I, I I'm just pulling at strings here, man. I got nothing. I don't I, know. Yeah, I, I really can't follow that. I don't know. Um, uh, okay. The, the last Jedi just showed us that Kylo Ren, the new Vader has killed Ben solo. Dumbasses. Snoke was never going to die in The Last Jedi, and he didn't. Uh, hmm. So now we're back to uh, Walk Hard, the Dewey Cox story. Well, <laughs> this is the worst case being cut in half I've ever seen. <laughs> so, um, pardon me, uh, Westworld, but I don't know if you re- remember this part, but uh, Snoke was cut in half, yeah. and they showed him later in the movie with his tongue lolling on the floor because he was dead. And, and this whole... Kylo Ren has killed Ben Solo. See this thing. T- Last Jedi just showed us that Kylo Ren has killed Ben Solo. They showed us. No, they didn't. If you're trying to say that there's still good in him, like there was with Vader, we don't know that yet. He could come out in Episode Nine and be 100 percent a piece of garbage. No, I think he was saying just <clears throat> the opposite. I'm. I, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, he 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 could come out and be completely conflicted. You don't know that he's just all of a sudden going to come out and be an an abhorrent I mean, piece while, of shit. You know, like while he was in the the walker at the end you know they insinuated that he's like full dark now but the same point he's so he's been so torn through two movies that who knows if he's and you're not gonna know until you see that character progression into episode nine so yeah he, he could be right yeah i just i i don't understand that and i, mean, I think that was the kind of the point was you know he had the chance when Ray was like, you know, tell him to stop firing. Stop. He's like, nope, nope. I'm, I'm the Supreme leader. Now I'm, I'm going to keep shooting at those little. <laughs> and- <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think that was the whole different. That was the twist was, you know, whereas Vader was redeemed and, and came back when someone, you know, tried to shepherd him back to the light. Kylo's like, nope, I chose my side. It's yep. the dark side. Yep. Yeah. I just, <laughs> Snoke was never going to die in the last Jedi, and he didn't. What the hell? But oh, it goes on to say why. So just just wait, strap in, kitties. <laughs> oh boy, uh, is this is this better than Ray in an egg? Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 Snoke created all the Raylo. He has to use that term. Created all the Raylo mind links, including the one at the end of the film when he was supposed to be dead. So he gets cut in half, but yet he's still using force tricks. Doesn't it seem more plausible that he created the connection and then the connection persisted? Yes. I mean, the the movie shows that both Kylo and Ray have kind of progressed their powers to an extent, like AJ just said, you know, Maybe somebody else introduces the two of them and then fades off and the two of them still find a way to speak to each other after the fact. Mm -hmm. Or maybe Kylo Ren is doing it because he just kind of develops the power or something. He didn't know he had it and creating that link, he was able to keep it. I don't know. Or Ray was hoping to see him without his shirt on again. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, exactly. All I know is, is that I know I know an explanation that I don't buy. That Snoke is actually alive after getting cut in half and he was still doing it. 
Watch, watch. We're, the, the next movie is going to come out, and, and we're going to look like total idiots. Like this guy actually is one of the writers of the of episode nine. <laughs> look, you saw how good you saw how good that hologram was in episode seven. So maybe that was hologram Snoke getting cut in half. That's true. It could it could be. Well, if we know anything about Star Wars, we know that you can get cut in half and come back with spider legs. So. It's funny you mentioned that, AJ, because. Snoke in The Last Jedi clearly showed he's more powerful than Luke, who just killed himself force projecting for a few minutes, including being solid to kiss Leia and Han's dice. The Force Awakens shows, one, Snoke created Rey. Uh, how does it show that? Do you see what I mean? Where he just has this opinion and he says, he says it showed it. Uh, no, it did not. It showed no such thing. It showed no connection between Snoke and Ray at all. Yeah, dark rises and light to meet it. That pretty much says that he was doing his own thing, and then oh, here we go. Here's a challenger. Yeah. So again, my why, opinion's right. Why would he want to create Ray? Ray's whole mission is to kill him. This is like the perfect case. <laughs> this is like the perfect case study of of why, like trolling on the internet is just the stupidest damn thing ever what's really interesting though is that this this guy straight up believes it and we straight up don't like we we all watch the same movies and we get totally different things out of it well of course but we're wrong because you know we didn't go along with his opinion uh okay so one snoke created rate two ray's mother lied to snoke to save her child's life and hide her on jakku we never met her mother we don't know who the mother is how can you say that? I knew he would see Steve, you and I've read this, so I we right. knew AJ was gonna love this. I I'm it telling makes you, for dude. terrible audio though, because I'm just sitting here dumbfounded. I got nothing well, to say back. It's fan reaction. We're discussing. Uh yeah, that one doesn't I mean Ray's mother lied to Snoke to say okay, if he's got the force, how how is she gonna lie to Snoke? I mean, if Snoke is this, his, his all power, power, he's all powerful, but can't see through the uh, the the trickery of a junk trader. Yeah, a drunk, a drunken junk trader. There, there was he ordering so much... a sandwich at the time that he was that she was talking to him. <laughs> right. He was just like he was too busy ordering ordering his pastrami on ride. <laughs> like I don't know. But now he, we're outside he was of busy getting his quarter portion. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Now, now we're outside of misinterpreting the movie and straight into fabricating events that never even were shown that's, that's what i'm saying like, i would i we need to get a dialogue going with him and and see like what else he has in this story i want more details around this oh you're going to get some okay good let's go let's do this and, and, no just from what this guy sounds like it sounds like he works for the u.s government <laughs> <laughs> he is, man. he's out in roswell <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Okay. Uh, um, he works for the Trump administration. <laughs> <laughs> Fake news. Um, three, Luke, Obi-Wan, and Yoda trained Rey for years from the Jedi texts and made her forget anything that will identify her as the chosen one by Snoke. But he just said that, like... She's the chosen one. So, I, so this is like a sleeper agent that they developed? I guess so. You know, so so now now we're making people forget crap. They spent a lot of time training her just to yeah. go, you know, let's wipe this clean and start over from scratch again. Yes. Yes. So so yes, yeah, so they train her up, wipe all memory, and then let let these powers and abilities just resurface on their own. He 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 doesn't say <laughs> I forgot this mm. next one. Yeah, so yeah, we're gonna train you, but then we're gonna wipe your memory. Like you're you're not gonna be able to remember any of any of this training crap. So yeah, but you're the chosen one, so we're just gonna let you rot for a while. Here, go, go, you know, go hang out on Jakku. Yeah, just do that. <laughs> so, like, go, go what, sit in a desert. Like, what sense does this make? Go, good, good Jedi like sitting in deserts. Go yeah. do that. <laughs> there's a there's a holdout ad ad in there. <laughs> You could, you, could, you could live there. Put okay. the sandy helmet on, dummy. You're not going <laughs> to. So, all right, well, here it goes. Eat here it goes. Eat your green bread, stupid. <laughs> and, <laughs> and hope that your force powers come back. <laughs> exactly. All righty, here we go. One of the best ones, because, of course, you know, 
we obviously know this is going to happen. Don't forget, he to- he's telling us so. Finn and Ray will insert the blank. <laughs> Mary. Finn and Ray See, will and marry. That's how he's the Padme because Finn's going to have the twins now. Perfect. <laughs> now it all makes sense. See, yeah. we're coming full circle here. There all we right. go. That, all right. that explains it. Okay. Five. Kylo Ren will kill Ben Solo and bring an end to the Skywalker saga. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Two pages ago, yeah, he already killed him. <laughs> excuse me, Westworld. Um, uh, let's see here. The Last Jedi just showed us that Kylo Ren has killed Ben Solo. And only a few short sentences later, you say Kylo Ren will kill Ben Solo and bring an end to the Skywalker saga. But uh, According in, to your warped sense of reality, that already happened. In episode three... Palpatine told Anakin that you can go back and save your loved ones. So maybe Kylo goes back, saves himself so he could kill himself again a second time because he's bored. Apparently <laughs> he's, kicked, he's kicked so much ass. He's got to go back and kick old ass that he's already kicked. And he takes all this. So literally, I swear this guy actually thinks that there's going to be some like second manifestation of himself that he can put a lightsaber through. Well, yeah. <laughs> episode nine is going to have the, the Ben Solo clone army. And he's he's going to be like Dr. Strange where he makes like 800 of himself in, right. in, in Infinity War. Uh, okay. J.J. Abrams left clue after clue in The Force Awakens explaining Rey's powerful bloodline and who trained her. Um, We know she is powerful in The Force. And we know JJ loves to leave clues behind. He he doesn't like to resolve anything. He likes to just set up plot threads. Yeah, without having a clue of where they're going. <laughs> so Ray was never Has anyone here seen Lost. I mean, this is, this is a very old, <laughs> perfect example. He even admitted he's like, yeah, we just set some stuff up in the first couple seasons. Then it got so huge, we're like, oh crap! Now we got to do something with them. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting way of writing, really. And and. I, for Star Wars, it's actually pretty ingenious because it leaves stuff open you can go talk about later, which is pretty cool story wise. I mean, if you get it right, yeah. I mean, his his way of writing stories like that is pretty ingenious, you know. So, um, uh, yeah, Ray was never abandoned on Jakku, but by was be. I I don't know how he wrote the sentence, but Ray was never abandoned on Jakku, but was being. It says by by. Ray was never abandoned on Jakku, by was beating was being hidden from Snoke. So she's being hidden from Snoke on Jakku. Being okay. hidden from Snoke, but Snoke created Ray. Yes. Yes. Get ready to do some calendar math, kids, because here we go. Wait, so 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 far, let me get the story. Snoke created Ray. Ray apparently was but then hidden. being being babysat by a drunken junk trader that had felt her force powers and felt that she needed to hide Ray in some sand. Apparently so. so. Okay. And and when <clears throat> when that happened, that's when Luke and Obi-Wan and Yoda trained her? Yes. Using the Jedi texts and then made her forget all about it. Okay, so they went to Jakku. Cause she, no, they trained her and then dumped her on Jakku to hide her. So at what point did... Did they hide her from Snoke so the Jedi could come in and train her? When will then be now? Soon. <laughs> so this is it, 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 it continues to get better. Solo shows <laughs> Kira is Ray's mother and was Snoke's trusted assassin or hand who betrayed him to save her child. You barely got through that sentence, and in my mind. I was like, I'm going to go upstairs and open my gun safe and blow my damn brains out. <laughs> you got halfway through the sentence and that literally went through uh, my head. I'm like, I'm going to go shoot myself. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Solo shows Kira is Ray's mother. Okay. Well, Solo happens 10 years before the events of episode four. So you got 10 years there and Kira is what in her 20s? Yeah, something Late like 20s. that. Let's just, let's just let's just they're teenagers in the flat in the first portion of the movie. Yeah, and it's what like three years after that, yeah. that the rest of the movie takes place. So let's say she's twenty. So I, I think let's I remember the so timeline. By- it's thirteen years before the Battle of Yavin, 
and then 10 years before the Battle yes, of Yavin. Those are the exactly. two time periods yeah. covered. Yeah. So let, let's just say that Kira is 20 in the events of Solo at the end. So there's 20 years. So in New Hope, she's 30. And how many years is it between a New Hope, the beginning of a New Hope and the end of Jedi? It's like, what? Six? Five or six. Yeah, I think it's six. So we'll say then, so she was 36, which means by the end, by the time the new trilogy came around, she would have been 66 years old. And if Ray is, let's say, 20, so she had Ray when she was like 46. Okay. So technically that could be, but there it it does not show Kira is Ray's mother. So, you know. And it does not show that she was Snoke's trusted assassin or hand. Oh, here's another one. Yeah, she was she was a servant to Darth Maul. She was a crime lord. Yeah. Kira is based on Mara Jade without violating film canon that forbids Jedi marrying or having children. Uh, I, do you guys remember anything about Kira being based on Mara Jade? I don't remember that. I don't I didn't see that anywhere. Uh, I'm still think, I'm still thinking about the age thing, because according to Wikipedia, uh, Ray was born 11 years after 15 ABY. So 15 years after the Battle of Yavin. So she would have been. So that's nine years after yeah, Return nine, of the Jedi. Nine years after Jedi. So she would have been 21. Okay. So she was 21. So at nine years after the Battle of Yavin, it would be 15, 25. Yeah. So like 45 how, or whatever. 45 years old. So we were about right. Uh, okay. So, okay. <clears throat> Lawrence Kasdan co-wrote The Force Awakens and Solo, knows JJ's trilogy story, knows Ray's background, that at her original name was Kira, K-I-R-A. That was used in the script. That was a pre-version of it. Lawrence Kasdan creates a female character called Kira with dark hair and an English accent who is known to Han and Lando, who is a nobody who rose to be a trusted lieutenant of a gangster, who is a trained killer now working for a dark lord, and who lies to a dark lord to save a person she loves, and appears to abandon Han on a desert planet flying away in a ship, just as Rey appeared to be abandoned on Jakku by someone flying away in a ship. Dumbasses. So he likes to keep so, calling us dumbasses. So, so if, you, if you fly away in a ship... You must be related. No, what no, he, what he's he, saying if is, if you are a woman with dark hair and an English accent, you're related. So let's like, go down the timeline. So you got episode one. So Luke Skywalker is related to Yoda because he flew away in a ship, right? Well, he well, he's, well hold on, think about the women in Star Wars. But right he's now. comparing Ray to Kira. This is this is him trying to prove that Ray is Kira's daughter. Because they have English accents, they have dark hair. Kira already abandoned. Show it showed Kira abandoning Han, somebody she cares about, on a desert planet. So she obviously did that to Ray. It's just ba making parallels between the two characters. Well, right, is what he's doing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you got in episode one and two, you have a dark-haired female character with a slight English accent, correct? Uh, so yes. she has kids that you know. Well, again, okay, so that's episode one, two, three. Leia fakes an English accent. Right. <laughs> that does go away, so, doesn't it? So now you have Leia, so they're obviously related. We know that. Uh, Kira's in between there with dark hair and an English accent, so she's got to be related to Padme and Leia at some point, too, right? Because Ray has dark hair and an English accent, so they all it's all first full circle. So Ray's... Ray's uh, uh, related to Leia and Kara and Padme and <laughs> yeah, every female in Star Wars all comes from the same bloodline because <clears throat> English accent, dark hair. I, I I get what he's trying to say by showing the parallels, but it's that's that's reaching. You know, oh, she left Han on a desert planet. And she cared about him, so obviously she did the same thing to Ray. Like no, this is just casting archetypes. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's you know. Like, that, no, I, still, I still don't think the ages line up for that anyways. It's well, right. Like, Remember everyone wanted Obi-Wan to be Ray's dad. Right. We're like, uh, no, he might be a grandfather, but it does not work out that he could possibly like there's too many years there. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, so, we just proved it. <laughs> yeah. So it's not ridiculous to say Kira is Ray's grandmother. 
if you really wanted to try to get into that kind of thing, but they can write mother, that in. mother, the ages just they can't line up. It's and not unless she popped Ray out at or what? What did you say? Mid sixties or whatever the hell it would. It been. should be like forty five. Well, so I guess that's God. I don't know. That one. That's not too unlikely. I guess well, it is and it isn't at forty five. I guess. I mean, yeah, the, I mean, the wonky thing is this though: if if Ray ended up, the other the other popular theory is that Ray is you know like Han's kid, right? Right. And that's where the whole Kira connection came in. Like that's to say, okay, Ray is like stupid powerful in the Force. And we know Kira isn't. So if Ray was going to be related to Kira and be stupid powerful in the Force, that would imply that Han is the one that introduced the Force power. Like Han, this whole time, has apparently been a forceful being and just we didn't know it. Well, he did use a lightsaber. Yeah. <laughs> He's practicing on a tauntaun. He got a shelter built. Yeah. All right. So. The Last Jedi is a bad film, but it does not ruin J.J. Abrams' great trilogy story. The Last Jedi shows, so here we go back into this again. The Last Jedi shows, one, Snoke was force projecting the whole time to get Kylo Ren to kill Ben Solo. He's now mentioned Kylo Ren killing Ben Solo three times and can't make up his mind if it already happened or if it's going to happen. So, yeah, for, so he's for, so Snoke is force projecting the whole time. That, uh... Hey, if Luke can do it, Snoke can do it, right? Oh, uh, yeah, but here's the thing. When Luke w- had was run through with a lightsaber as a force projection, nothing happened. When Snoke well, he was- wanted it, he wanted it to be obvious that he wasn't there, though. Okay, but it's not an actual physical thing. It's a projection. So Snoke being cut in half kind of eliminates that possibility. <laughs> that's that's one hell of a trick right there. If you could project yourself being bisected. Yeah. So, yeah, there's <laughs> that. I mean, seriously. St- Snoke still doesn't know Ray is his creation and the chosen one because Yoda made Luke forget anything that would reveal the chosen one to Snoke. So now they're making Ray forget and then Yoda turns around and makes Luke forget. Oh my God. This is getting to be like the departed. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Okay. You know how I was talking about off the air before we started this episode, how apparently you can like do chapters in episodes and, you know, change images for podcast apps. This is going to have charlie kelly from always sunny with the with the strings and the, and the, and the conspiracy <laughs> board behind him. yes <laughs> well i mean i mean this is like ridiculous because snoke still doesn't know ray is his creation and the chosen one then why do they have to hide her there's no point in hiding her from snoke on jakku if he doesn't know <laughs> this, actually this is like arrested development where where uh Job gets caught in the loop of taking roofies all the time, so he keeps forgetting that he's already roofied himself. He roofies himself again. <laughs> I, I haven't seen that, but the, that's basically what this is. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So everyone me. forgets everything because they keep forgetting they've already wiped each other's minds. Yeah. So they just... Okay, so The Force Awakens shows Ray can, Ray can read the mind of a Skywalker. The Force Awakens shows Luke, Obi-Wan, and Yoda trained Ray and made her forget. Where does it show that? It doesn't, there's nothing about Obi-Wan, and it does not show that. It does not show that. I think he's taking all the voices in that Force vision she has by touching the lightsaber and just assuming that these are all, like, it's a, it's a totally factual flashback. Yeah. So it, any voices heard means that she has had interactions with them. It's got to be. I mean, because it, it's, it's not even there. Ray is not strong enough to stop Snoke reading her thoughts, so both she and Luke had to be made to forget knowing each other. So Ray was made to forget her training, Luke was made to forget that they trained her, and then now they're both made to forget they even know each other. Oh, and Snoke was made to forget that he made Ray. Yes. So there was that too. Well, no, he wasn't made, but he doesn't know yet. So let's let's not let's so, not so, Oh, okay. So let me make sure I got yeah. this straight then. So he accidentally made Ray. I, who knows? He didn't even say. See, it's it just, it's so stupid. Ray was a prom night dumpster baby. <laughs> prom night <laughs> dumpster baby. <laughs> I love Family Guy. Um, <clears throat> okay, Luke died a hero in The Last Jedi. Yes, he did. Luke knew he was going to die saving Ray and allowed Yoda to make him forget. What is with this making people forget shit all the time? What this the f- f- is this guy talking about? That's not even a thing. That's not a force power. No. It isn't. Force suggestion to do things or say things, yes. Force suggestion to not remember something, no. Yeah, I mean, it's like erasing part of a computer drive or something. What the hell? 
Yeah, I mean, okay, Yoda clearly knows who Rey is in The Last Jedi. Yoda never tells Luke who she really is. Yoda simply stops Luke killing himself. What? Luke did... It... <sighs> Confirms Ben is lost, but tells Luke we must save Rey. Wait, wait, so you, he thinks wait, that Luke was running into the forest tree so he could be burned alive? Apparently so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I can't even do it. I can't even do it. But he he just said something about Ben, but Ben got killed like seven paragraphs ago twice. Yeah. So. Oh, well, you know, it's a whole force ghost thing. <laughs> okay. Well, clearly they made Kylo Ren forget that he already killed Ben Solo. That's why uh, I keep doing it. Well, you know what, man? You numb nuts need to shut the f*** up. That was the next sentence. <laughs> so. Yeah, J.J. Abrams is not worried about how bad The Last Jedi is. Um, the, that like, part's true because yeah. he is raking in money regardless of if it's a good or a bad movie. So. Yes. Uh, and, yeah, it, and I am increasingly afraid that he's going to try to, like he might have had a trilogy in mind, and he's going to do his best to get it back on the rails, just well, no matter how hard it is to do after the events of episode eight. Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, J.J. Abrams is not worried about how bad The Last Jedi, Last Jedi is because he told Ryan Johnson Snoke will be force projecting the whole time and that Yoda made Luke forget knowing and training Ray's, uh, training Ray for years. Again, I'm not reading this crappy. I'm just trying to co- like figure out what this guy's trying to say. And 99% of all fans never saw the reference to Revenge of the Sith and the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise. Don't know George Lucas has confirmed Palpatine created Anakin and didn't see Snoke as the new Palpatine and Rey as the new Anakin. Dumbasses indeed. Uh, so 99 yeah. out of 100 fans don't see the the real plot to these movies. Only he has seen this. Yeah, apparently so. Okay. Now, I, I, I want to make it. I want to make a disclaimer here. I well, want to thank I want to thank Westworld before you do this. I want to thank Westworld for listening to us and taking yes. the time to write this. Yes, and that is all the praise I will give you. <laughs> yeah. And I'm spent. Um, yeah, I I don't like anyone who listens to us knows that we are very obvious about stating that we are by far not the smartest. You know, the sharpest crayons in the drawer in the box, whatever, you know, as I stumble <laughs> through that, just proves it. But, uh, you know, we're not the smartest guys in the room. We don't know everything about star Wars. We know a good amount, but not nearly as much as most of these other podcasts. And we talk a lot of crap. We make a lot of things up and we do get facts wrong, but this, I mean, the one thing I could say we don't do is say, well, the movie showed this when it was never there. And start making up force powers and throwing out our opinion like it's fact. It's like, no, dude, that doesn't exist. <laughs> like, that's not real. If you're going to write fanfic, at least don't contradict yourself. Yeah, and don't rip on the people that are just throwing their opinion out there, too. I mean, that's the thing. You know, it's a, and, and he keeps calling it dumbasses. I'm happy to consider an alternate point of view, but I'm having a hard time following this point of view to even give it any thought. Yeah, I... It doesn't make any sense to me. And it's like, if you don't like the movie, that's cool. Um, if if you think you're seeing things in the movie, that's fine. Just go, you know, what I thought they were doing was, okay, well, if that's your interpretation, that's cool. You know, some people interpret things differently. That's totally fine. That's part of the fun of watching a movie. Like, oh, this is what I got out of it. Oh, I got this out of it. Then you have a discussion and off you go. That is the thing. If we're in line for a panel at Star Wars Celebration in Chicago and this guy comes up and he wants to like talk this out. Awesome. Let's do that. I would love to have that conversation. I, I, I have no problem with it. It'd be hilarious. First thing I'd be like, dude, you got to type a little better, by the way. Like, yeah. That was hard to read, dude. <laughs> like, I mean, seriously, I just, I was, I, I'm a, I have a management position. I spent all day writing like annual reviews and, and creating the form to do it. So I know a little bit about typing professionally. So, um, yeah, th- thank you for the long comment. It's, it's definitely very involved and detailed, which is cool. Um, you sound like a dumbass and part of it. I would say if anybody's a dumbass, it was more you than us. <laughs> but um, thank you. And you got basically gave us almost an entire episode. And, so. uh, and in conclusion, uh, we fart in your general direction. <laughs> your and your sm- mother was a hamster and, and your, your father, father smelt, smelt of elderberries. <laughs> now go away or we shall taunt you a second time. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh. So um, just want to read one more. This is more of like a... Uh, before you get to that, I did bring this conversation up when it happened with some other podcasters in a Facebook group that I'm a part of. And one guy replied very quickly and said, this Westworld guy, exact same thing. Copy and paste on something that he had put wanted this guy's podcast like months before ours. So this guy just has this thing canned in his computer or his phone or whatever. And when I think we just messed up then when something does not go his way, bam, there it goes. <laughs> he probably just wants someone to recognize it on their show. And we just screwed up and did it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we got trolled, man. <laughs> We got oh, meta trolled. Yeah, we did. Yeah, well, we still fart in his general direction. <laughs> I agree. En- All right, so we'll- enjoy the six people that just heard your name, buddy. <laughs> 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 right. Oh my god, our giant listenership. Um. All right, so just one final one. Uh, this one is from our episode Rogue One versus Solo: A Star Wars Story Blueprint for the Future, and this is from our buddy Chris who. Uh, We brought up at the beginning of the first half of this two-part episode. Um, And I just wanted to throw this in there because uh, it's very complimentary and we really appreciate it. So, um, hey, I don't know if it will depress you to know that I'm still here. Definitely not. We always... (laughs) I love love reading his comments. They're super intelligent. Way smarter than what we do. Uh, Pretty much the only guy who engages with your YouTube component on a regular basis. You guys have more followers. (laughs) (laughs) He just shit on us while complimenting, right? But he's not wrong, man. It can't be. It can't be considered shitting on us when he's right. <laughs> like, it's not an insult if it's correct. That's like calling me fat. Yeah, I'm fat. Okay, we're like that puppy in the pet store that gets moved into the, like the double the double size kennel because it's the only one that's been there long enough to actually like grow up out of puppy state and into like young adult. <laughs> right. And that you just keep coming by and like you know wanting to take it out and play with it because you feel bad for it. Yeah, you're never gonna adopt. It. You're just going to keep playing with it and then put it back in its crate. Don't depress me about dog stuff like that. Uh, you guys have more followers somewhere else, right? I'm blown away. <laughs> Shut up, Steve. Damn it. I'm blown away you guys aren't swimming in a sea of subscribers and followers. You guys are way better at this than most other popular podcasts to do the same thing you guys do, except not with Star Wars. You'd think the Star Wars thing would give you guys a leg up. Maybe if you guys drop the disclaimer and intro, or if you keep it, add a prelude where you guys tease your topic and make bad jokes or something to hook people off the bat. Uh, Chris, our show is one entire giant, big, long, bad joke. (laughs) (laughs) We've kept this joke running for three years now. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. This has been the longest running (laughs) joke in (laughs) podcasting history. Are you kidding? (laughs) Yeah, it has, man. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh, okay, so it's got to have something to do with people not knowing to skip to the two minute mark and getting impatient and clicking off to something else. It can't be that you guys are just assholes because that would mean that would mean that I'm also a me. That makes just too much sense for my liking. <laughs> nah, you guys are cool. That's really his comment. Nah, you guys are cool. Anyway, I just wanted to say I didn't see Solo because The Last Jedi was so bad. Just kidding. Episode 8 rubbed me the wrong way personally, but I don't think it killed Star Wars or anything. I saw Solo twice. Loved it. Can't wait for the Blu-ray. I'm going to get my digital copy now after hearing you guys say it's already out. I didn't know. I'm about to burn the imagery of this movie into my television. May the force be with you guys. Thank you again, Chris. Uh, And also, we're sorry if uh, you were rubbed personally in the wrong way by The Last Jedi. Yes. (laughs) 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 It it chafes a little. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Show me on the doll where the last Jedi touched you. <laughs> <laughs> and then Steve has a new intro quote. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Whew. So uh yeah, so on that note, why don't we close up shop for for this uh, second half of the two part episode? <laughs> so, thanks again, everybody, for tuning in to another episode of the Nerf Herder Council. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, as always, we are brought to you by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash NHC for your 30 day trial and a free audiobook download. Uh, I'm currently listening to a book about Groucho Marx. So, 
It's very interesting. Uh, so go check that out. Uh, thanks to Galactic Empire. Uh, go check out their stuff on Rise Records. It's available Spotify, Amazon Unlimited, uh, any place you get your music, purchase it or download, whatever. You can find us on pretty much any of the Apple and uh, Google, Android, whatever podcast apps like Spreaker, Stitcher, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Pocket Casts, CastBox, as we said, Spotify. Uh, we do have all of our episodes up on YouTube, and as you now know, we might read your stuff on the air. Uh, we have our website, nerfhurtercouncil.com. You can find us on Facebook. Just look up Nerf Herder Council. You can email us at our brand new, uh, brand new since we started the show three years ago, uh, <laughs> email address, nerfhurtercouncil at gmail.com. And don't forget that you can buy your official Nerf Herder Council swag at shop.nerfherdercouncil.com. So go there and check all of our stuff out there. There's three awesome designs that AJ made. You can get it pretty much on anything you can think of. So go do that. Support the show. You will definitely be able to find us wearing it at uh, Star Wars Celebration Chicago in April, which is fast mm-hmm. approaching. And I will completely be honest that I'm going to whore us out because I might be wearing a Nerf Herder Council shirt every single day. So <laughs> I just want, to, just want to promote my own show, and I'm a big billboard. So <laughs> a 225 pound billboard. So, um, and uh, we do have our Twitter page, which is probably where we're most active. It is at NHC Podcast. So check us out there. We'll probably also read tweets going forward if we get stuff tweeted at us. So mm-hmm. uh, until next time, I'm your host, JT at Dog Pound Jedi. He's AJ at Drake Adams 579. He's Steve at JSteve1005. And we will catch you next time. This bucket of bolts is never going to get us past that blockade. This bucket's got a few surprises left in her. Plus, me and Chewie are on it. Ain't that right, Chewie? Hell yeah, you my nerf herder. You my nerf herder. Ha <laughs> ha!